Hey, Canucks fans. Let's talk about the prospects that will see some time with the Canucks this upcoming season. I'm Clay Emo. I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Thursday, November the 19th. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. Hope you're doing well. Got my haircut, as you can see. Not wearing my my glasses for the one or two people who notice those type of things because we had another big recording session. This one was with Neil McDonough, famous actor of Suits and Band of Brothers fame. A bunch of movies, a bunch of TV shows. I tweeted about him um, last week. But yes, we recorded something with Neil McDonough this morning. Pretty cool project that I'm involved in. Okay, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to talk about the Vancouver Canucks prospects. And I'll admit, and I'm, I'm very honest with all of you, that I'm not a prospects guru. I'm not a prospects expert. I don't know much heading into the draft. I read about these guys once the Canucks have drafted them. I don't know basically any prospects from any other teams unless they are a top 10 pick. And I leave that to other very capable people in the Vancouver Canucks uh, fan base for sure. But I do like to talk about them once they get to Utica, especially once they get onto the main roster, even though I'm not sure if you call them a prospect by that, by that point. And so I wanted to talk about this upcoming season whether it's January 1, January 15, February 1, where, whenever it may start, what type of players, what prospects might we see in the Canucks lineup this season? So you think about the coming out of training camp, I really only see one prospect making, and I don't know who it'll be. I think it'll be Oli Ulevi, but I think it will be a guy on defense. We know that our, presuming that there's no other moves to be made, which might not be a good presumption, but let's work with what, who we have right now. We know that up front, we have, sorry, up on, on the back end, we know our top four is set with Edler, with Hughes, with Schmidt, and with Myers. Not bad, a lot better with Schmidt there, but yes, top four is six. Uh, not, not, our top four isn't six, our top four is set. But to make up the six, let's pencil in Jordy Ben for the fifth spot. Jordy Ben's got one more year on his $2 million contract. And he can play both the left side or the right side. He played on the left side last season when he was playing with Troy Stetcher. He played on the right side last season when he was playing with Oscar Fantenberg. So we know that Ben can play either the left or the right side. So now we have the sixth spot. And we've been hearing a lot about this going to be between four prospects or four young guys. We have Ole Ulevi and we have Jack Rathbone on the left. And we have Brogan Rafferty and Jalen Chatfield on the right. Rafferty is the oldest of all those players, and he has played two or three games in a Canucks uniform. Chatfield, I, I have to check his stats. I, I, it seems to me that he's played one or two games in a Canucks uniform, or maybe a few more than that. Then we have uh, Jack Rathbone, who's not played a pro game in his life yet, coming out of Harvard. And then we have Ole Ulevi, who did get into that um, play-in game against Minnesota last, last season or a few months ago, and he played really well. He only had six or seven minutes, but he handled, he quit himself very well, and he, he did not look out of place as well. So basically, if you take one of those four guys, if it's Ulevi or Rathbone, a left side guy, then Ben will play on the right. If it's Rafferty or Chatfield, a uh, right side guy, then Ben will play on the left. I think of those four guys, I think that it's going to be Ole Ulevi. I think he has the most NHL-ready game, and I think it's about time that we, we see what he can do. 2016, Fifth overall draft pick, first round, obviously. And um, I would never call him a bust. I would never rush him. Defensemen generally take a little longer. But it's been four or five years now, and I think the Canucks are eager. I know I know the Canucks fans are, are easy, eager to see what we have in Ole Ulevi. And I do think he has the leg up on the other three guys, um, you know, coming out of camp. So I'm my guess is that Ole Ulevi will be the only prospect that makes the team coming out of training camp. And then you put Jordy Ben on his right side. And then, of course, you still need a seventh defenseman as well. Of those four guys, though, I'm most excited about Jack Rathbone because I'm excited about his skating. I'm excited about his offensive ability. I know he still has got to do some work on his defensive end, which always kind of puzzles me when they say a defenseman needs to work on his defense. Isn't that in the in his job description? Heck, it's in the job title. But um, I can see where Ole Ulevi might be kind of more solid defensively. Same with Brogan Rafferty, where, uh, uh, whereas um, Jack Rathbone might have the most offensive upside of all those four guys so yes down the road i would love to see a left side of hughes rathbone and Yolevi. maybe we're three or four years away from that um, but um i think rathbone is the most intriguing of the four but i think when it comes to who's actually going to start the season with the team i think it is going to be only Yolevi. 
Then we move up to the Fords. And I don't see a Vancouver prospect, a Canucks prospect, making the team on a training camp. There's already a glut of Fords there. Um, I think Hoglander will have the, the best chance, but I, I don't see him making the team out of, out of camp. And I say that because we know Pod Colson still has to finish his year in Russia. Now, depending on how far his team gets in the KHL playoffs, def depending on whether or not there's a World Championships, uh, we could see Pod Colson in the Canucks lineup as early as April, which would be exciting. You know, you could insert him right into the top nine for sure in the second or third line. And I think overall, we have the most uh, um, excitement about him because of how high he was picked. 10th overall, first round in the 2019 draft last year here in Vancouver. So I think Pod Colson certainly can't start the team, uh, start the season with the team, but we could certainly see him in a Canucks uniform by the end of the season. And of all the forwards, he gives me the most excitement, the most hope. Hoglander, I think, could be a, a, um, a second or, or third line guy as well. But uh, let's not get let's not get our hopes too high with him because yes, he's got some offensive flair for sure. We've seen the fancy goals, but he might be more of a, a grinding type tough to play against player as opposed to an offensive stalwart stalwart so we'll see so i think huglander does not start the season with the team i think pod colson does uh, join the team late in the season and then the other guy the other guy i, I think we can talk about is cole lind um you know we want to see what he does and uh you know drafted a few years ago but he he has an outside shot of making the team but i still think he might be a couple years away and um, i don't know i have to look up if he has to be uh, protected for the expansion draft um, that happens at the end of next season. So um, all three guys I'm excited about, Hoglander, um, Lynn for sure, but Pod Colson um, the most of those three. One other forward I do want to bring up is Aiden McDonough. We drafted him in the seventh round in 2019. So he was our final pick of the draft last, last year at Rogers Arena. But he quietly put together a really good season with Northeastern. He was playing on the same line as Tyler Madden, ex Canuck Tyler Madden, boohoo. But McDonough put up 27 points in 31 games, so almost a point per game player. He's a winger. He's big, got good size, good hands, a decent speed for, for a guy his size. And I think he could be um, a bottom six, maybe even the third line guy um, once he, he fully develops. Again, that'll probably be three, four, five years down the road from now. But what, what's really cool about that is, is usually in a typical drafts class, you want to make sure that at least one guy hits. And it's generally considered successful if, if two guys hit so logically speaking you want your first rounder to, to hit especially if that's a, a lottery pick and then you think it'd be a second or third rounder and if you get a fourth fifth sixth or seventh rounder to pan out then that would be a bonus that's basically like a lottery ticket or found money and i think aiden mcdonough could be that guy for the vancouver canucks a few years from now so that's a name to keep an eye on aiden mcdonough playing at Northeastern. So there we go, Canucks fans. I think when it comes to this season, I think Yolevi makes the team out of camp. I think Pod Colson joins near the end of the season. Then the rest of the guys, the defensemen, Rafferty, Chatfield, um, and Rathbone, they might be call-ups, depending on where they start the season. And then on the on the forward side, I think Hoglander could be a call-up. And I think Colin might be one year um, or so away still. So that's what I think. And, and like I said, don't forget to keep an eye on Aiden McDonough. So I'd love to know what you think. Many of you might, not, might know <coughs> more about the prospects than I do. Not afraid to admit that. So leave a comment below. I'd love to read, react, and reply. Which prospects do you think will see ice time with the Vancouver Canucks sometime during this upcoming season? Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Enjoy the day. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. God bless and go Canesco.